Dr. Radcliffe, and this is Jasmine. And uh, I just wanted to introduce ourselves. Um, I did my undergraduate at University of Maryland. I have a bachelor's degree in anatomy and physiology, as well as my doctorate in chiropractic. <clears throat> and I did an extra three-year residency at Palmer in Iowa um, in rehabilitation, where there was ex uh, it was exhaustive, and I'm glad it's over. But anyway, um, the work we do here is very unique compared to most of the other chiropractic, physical therapy, or sports medicine clinics. And I think the best way to get to know us is just to, to see how we examine um, and some of the interesting um, evaluation tools we use. So we're just going to um, give you a little brief overview and we're going to um, examine um, Jasmine here and uh, just to give you an idea of what to expect. Now we're going to be examining her back. Uh, you may have a neck, shoulder, ankle, foot, or wrist problem, but um, we're going to start with the back. Okay? Okay, Jasmine. All right, first thing I want you to do is uh, stand up for me. All right, Jasmine, you're going to stand facing this way. Okay, uh, let's see. There we go. First thing we're going to look at is Jasmine's just overall symmetry. Noting any spinal uh, curvature, noticing any differences in the uh, height of the scapula. You may at home notice a high shoulder on one side in the mirror. Uh, she's a little tight there. Next thing, we're going to come down here. This is just a quick overview. I've already examined Jasmine to make sure she doesn't have any um, medical problems like our uh, rheumatoid arthritis, cancer. We've run blood work. We've had x-rays and MRIs. So this is just purely a biomechanical exam. Okay. Next, we're going to look at her hips since she does have a lower back complaint. And we do notice that she's a little elevated on this side and a little decreased on this side. We're also looking at her legs. Um, Jasmine, what I want you to do is stand just on this leg. Okay. Now we notice as Jasmine stood on this leg, she shifted her weight. She shifted a little bit farther more to the side than she should have, and her hip dropped. Let's do that one more time. Stand up straight and stand on this leg. Notice how that drops. This is a good indicator that she has some weakness in the outer gluteal muscles, the glute medius, minimus, and parts of the fibers of the glute max. Stand up. Let's check the other side stand on this leg. Same kinds of things there. In medicine we call this a Trendelenburg sign and this is commonly uh, a cause of lower back pain. Stand, stand up straight. Good. All right, let's scoot back a little bit so we don't hit our heads. Jasmine, go ahead and bend forward as far as you can. Good. Now we do see how she can get her hands to the floor, which might be, and I know she's, she's not an avid exerciser, so she might have a little hypermobility syndrome, and we can check that at a later date. You were evaluating her back, and there's no scoliosis. The spines do tend to project outwards, indicating that these muscles are not necessarily overly tight. Good. And now when you do that, is there any pain in the back or down the legs, Jasmine? No. No? Okay. Stand up nice and straight. Good. Okay, I want you to lean backwards now, and I'm going to bend you this way. Is there any pain in the back or shooting down here? And how about that? Yeah. There's a little bit of pain there. Okay. So she feels okay when she bends forward. Um, and the problem is localized when we bend this way. And to the side, she has lower back pain um, in this area. <laughs> now, the pain didn't go farther than this, correct? Gotcha. So it was just ready, radiating down. It was just here. Was it radiating down the leg? <clears throat> a couple of clues that this is um, diagnostic impressions that we can get is uh, pain when people bend forward and it goes down the back of their leg. If it's a numbing issue, we need to, do need to make sure there's not a herniated disc. However, pain with extension typically makes discs feel a little bit better, and the pain that refers down the back of the leg is called sciatica. So when she bends backwards and, and we rotate her this way, she gets a pain in here. We call that a facet syndrome. And that's where the joints in the back tend to perch and are irritated. There's actually a little piece of tissue in between the spinal joints called a meniscoid that can get trapped and there can be an irritable response. Typically that um, will, will cause some uh, back pain. It's central, but usually it's off to one side and referred down to the buttock. Typically, it doesn't refer below the knees, okay? So that's one thing we can look at. 
Okay, now let's have you stand uh, towards me, Jasmine. All right. Stand up nice and straight. <coughs> and let's get you at the camera, looking at the camera. Okay, so when we look at Jasmine straight on, we, we see a couple things. We see how her knees are, are, are not pointing straight, they're pointing more midline. Okay, in, in rehab we call that a winking patella. Usually an indicator that there's some weakness in the piriformis muscle here maybe some tightness inside there and on one of the hamstrings as well. She has mildly pronated feet. Okay. Nice and straight. And there's no hyperextension in the knee. Now, she's got some back pain, possibly uh, facet uh, syndrome. So we wanted to uh, distinguish, is this is there any component of the legs causing the back issue? So let's have you do this. Stand facing that way. Now, when standing, her right hip is down. And we're looking at Jasmine's back when she's standing, and we notice that she has, she's a little bit low when she stands on the side of pain. A little bit high on this side. So now we're going to have her sit down. Be very careful, Jasmine. There, there's a seat behind you. Good. And we see that that straightens out. Typically, the sit to stand test gives us information. If there's a problem in the back, it could be made worse by a problem in some of the weight bearing structures. And as we notice, she has knees that turn in. So there's some abnormality in the quality of the musculature and the sense of tone and length and shortening of some of the musculature, and also some weakness. So when she sits, she tends to be much more in a straightened, uh, normalized position. So it's possible that some of her problem is in the lower extremity, maybe some gluteal weakness that's contributing to her back issue. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is have you lie down on your back. You're gonna go through some flexibility. Take a look at Jasmine's flexibility to see if there's any issues that might be a, a problem for her back. So we're gonna examine the length of her hamstrings. And a good way to test strength is to lock down the pelvis, or flexibility rather. So we bring the other leg past midline, we bring this up. It should be at least 80 degrees. And she's right, right about there, that's normal. Next we're gonna check the flexibility of some of her buttock musculature, piriformis, obturator internus, that's tight. This should be a little bit more around 90 degrees, so she's about probably 15 degrees less, nor less normal than she ought to. I won't bother checking the other side uh, for the purposes of this video. Let's check her adductors. Okay. And that's normal, you three. That's normal length. Good. All right, the next thing we'll do, <coughs> we're gonna bring her at the very edge of the table and check the length of her hip flexors. Good. And lay down, Jasmine. Let's bend this knee up, grab this knee and hold it. Now, aha, uh -huh. we notice on Jasmine, you see how her knee comes up off the table. N normally hip flexors run from the spine across this area and insert right in there into the femur. And that's tight tight and considerably short, okay? So a normal hip flexor should really be about at least parallel with the ground, even about a eight to 10 degree below table. Okay, but, so she is definitely short on that side. We also notice her, the angle of her knee, and she's roughly about 90 degrees, so her quadricep is normal length. Okay, <clears throat> let's have you uh, scoot up and lie face down in the whole jacket. <coughs> Again, assessing quadricep length, and that's fine. That's fine. Our hip range of motion is normal. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to analyze. We've already established that her gluteal muscles are a little weak and her hip flexors are tight. Those two muscles play an important part, much like a, a bicep and a tricep, how they interact. If one is short and tight, its antagonist may be weak. The principle is called reciprocal inhibition. And that's an important factor in um, discovering why somebody has back pain. 
Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to hold on to some of the musculature in the back. I'm also going to place one finger on her glute and one finger on her hamstring. And we're going to test the firing order or the sequence of which she uses to extend her thigh. In normal subject, well, I'm not going to tell you what normal is because I want to see what she does. I don't want to influence her in any way. So, um, Jasmine, when I tell you, I want you to lift this leg uh, completely straight and lift it about you know, four inches off the ground and do it slowly. slower. The first couple inches is real important, so go ahead and do it again. Good. And down. And let's do one more time. Go ahead. Okay, you can stop. On her, she uses quite a bit of hamstring, and then she uses her back musculature here and then here to lift her leg back. So when somebody's walking, um, a normal pattern is for them to fire the hamstring, the glute, the opposite muscle, and then the same muscle. So it should look like that. And then this leg, hamstring, glute, opposite, and this leg. So each step where you use to swing your leg back, uh, you're going to use a lot of the gluteal muscle. She's really got a delayed gluteal muscle. So right off the bat, we can say she probably does have a facet syndrome because of the impingement, the referral pattern, but it's being complicated by very weak deconditioned gluteal muscles and an overactive hip flexor. Okay, so that's at least our, our uh, preliminary exam. Um, most of our patients get a little bit more detailed exam, plus making sure that there's no other medical problems or other orthopedic issues. Okay, so um, if you have any other complaints, whether they be a shoulder, the neck, um, we do different tests, and this is just a little intro to our office and some of the unique work we do. Thank you.